talking. Is that all right? Oh, there we go. Yes, please. Yes. Good to start. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, well, hi, everybody. I'm excited to be here. Um, I am talking to you about the College of Worcester, but first I wanted to give you a primer on uh, liberal arts in the United States. So my name is Rebecca McIntosh. I'm the Director of International Admissions for the College of Worcester. Um, I will include this information at the end as well, but I wanted to make sure that you knew how to contact me if you had any questions. So um, first things first, I wanted to talk to you about liberal arts. So um, there are almost 4,000 institutions in the United States for higher education. Over 19 million students are attending those schools. Um, a lot of them, the majority of them are four-year institutions. So they're universities and colleges. They have bachelors, masters, PhDs. Um, and then you have your two-year degree program. So typically they're vocational schools or associate's degree programs. Oftentimes, they are um, going to be uh, transferring to four-year institutions after their two, uh, their two years at their the community college or two-year degree program. And then you have what we're talking about today, which is the private liberal arts and sciences institutions. So there are just over 200 of them in the United States. So it's no wonder if you're not very familiar with them that, that, that you aren't, because there are so few of them in the U.S. So... Let's talk about college versus university. This is one of the things that tends to trip people up the most. So I am representing the College of Worcester. So that can be confusing uh, when you wonder, okay, is it college a university? Is a university a college? In a lot of countries, college or colegio in, in Brazil, where I'm from, is, is referred to as a high school. So in the US, you tend to hear college and university being used interchangeably whether that's right or wrong. So when you hear someone from the College of Worcester, we are a university. Typically, a college in the United States focuses on undergraduate. So they either only have bachelors or they primarily have bachelors. When you hear university, typically that's a larger institution that has a combination of masters and bachelors, maybe some PhDs throw in there. So they tend to be a bit bigger. So when you hear private liberal arts college, yes, it is a higher education institution. It is post-secondary school. It just tends to be a bit smaller and bachelor's degree focused. So what does liberal arts actually mean? So when you hear liberal arts, it's actually liberal arts and sciences. We just tend to truncate it and make it smaller, right? So the liberal means freedom of mind. So it actually comes from the Latin liberalis, meaning freedom, freedom of mind. We want you to be thinking at a higher level. So we focus on that critical thinking and, and a lot of those other skills. So we often shorten it. And so when I'm talking to students who are familiar with liberal arts, but not liberal arts and sciences, they tend to get a little surprised when I tell them that uh, the College of Worcester actually excels in a lot of areas, including biology, biochemistry, computer science, business economics. And I start talking about some of these STEM programs that tends to be surprising. It's because we truncate it. So it's actually liberal arts and sciences. So a typical liberal arts college is going to have smaller enrollments, smaller class sizes. It's going to be very undergraduate focused. So I mentioned that oftentimes they are only undergraduate. Um, sometimes they might have a couple of master's degree programs, but really the bachelor's degree is the focused. And they also tend to be very broad, very interdisciplinary. So part of that liberalis, the, the liberal arts thinking, that freedom of thought is that we want you to combine a lot of things so that you can hone in on your passions and really have that freedom to discover yourself um, in an educational environment. So it's very exciting, especially for students either who have no idea what they want to study, or maybe like the cute little nerdy kids like I was that had way too many ideas of what they wanted to study and didn't know how it all fit together. So why choose a liberal arts institution? So that undergraduate focus means that it is really small, discussion-based classes, uh, faculty attention, dedicated resources. So it, it tends to really be focused on those undergraduate students. 
Oftentimes, people assume that, oh, well, it's so small and there aren't um, any master's or PhD students, so are you even doing research? So I'm going to be talking a little bit later about the kind of research um, that our institution is doing, and that's actually very typical of a lot of uh, more uh, uh, fine-tuned programs at liberal arts colleges. So that attention is actually focused on the undergraduate student because professors, these PhDs, at our school, 97% of our, our teachers are PhDs and we don't have any teaching assistants. So these professors who are having to do research still are using the undergraduate students to help to further their research. So for example, I had a great conversation with a student from Japan who is in his final year and he's a chemistry major who was actually doing his senior project, working with a professor to help further his the project within chemistry. So he's getting to look at PFAS and ways to actually um, uh, clean up PFAS, a really important subject matter, but he's getting to do it because a professor, a PhD, got to know him in these small classes. The other benefit, too, is that it's residential. So um, students are living on campus at our school all four years. Typical liberal arts college, two, maybe three years that they're living on campus. And so they're part of a community. It is part of that entire all-encompassing experience. Very typical for a liberal arts college. And then it's also very diverse. So because it's so small, so our school, for example, only about 2,000 students, we're very very specific, uh, very conscious about the students that we're bringing into our school because we want to have that diversity of thought, diversity of experience. And you are going to see in a little bit the kind of diversity that we have on our campus. And then finally, there's that focus on both hard skills and soft skills. So students are, of course, learning how to do research, learning how to um, hone in on their critical thinking, learning their writing skills, learning their interview skills, learning all of those hard things, but also the soft skills. Living on campus all four years with a, a diverse array of students from all different backgrounds, you learn how to interact with people. You learn how to uh, get involved. You learn how to do all of these softer skill things that are incredibly important for surviving in the real world. So that's that's the primer for liberal arts. I hope that was helpful and keep all of those things in mind as I go forward and talk a little bit about my university. So I mentioned I work for the College of Worcester. So we are in Worcester, Ohio, just south of Cleveland. So a little bit about what makes us us. We are a global and inclusive campus. One of the things that really attracted me to working at Worcester, I have been there less than a year and a half, and I was really, really specific um, in choosing my next university to work for. So I specifically loved Worcester because of how globally focused it was. A lot of universities in the last couple of decades will all of a sudden have thought, oh, hey, this uh, international student thing is something that we should jump on as a trend. Worcester for decades, almost since its inception in 1884, has really been focused on that international presence that, and that globalization of thought. So you see it in our curriculum, you see it in the offerings for internships, you see it in a lot of different places. Our professors are incredibly international. I had a meeting the other day and we realized that we had four continents and six nationalities represented at the table. And that's very typical. We also have our connected learning that is designed specifically to help students to gain the building blocks to work toward their senior research that I'll talk about in a bit. And that's something that really, really makes Worcester Worcester. And then finally, um, I'll talk a bit about that senior capstone, that mentored research at the undergraduate level. So we have students, about 2,000, just under 2,000, and we don't want to get bigger than that. We, we think that's about our sweet spot. Um, with that, we have about 75 countries represented. Um, that's now 49 states represented. Um, and so we also have 24% U.S. students of color. And then on top of that, 15% international. So you're already getting to see that it's not just a bunch of kids from Ohio and a couple of international kids 
kids. It really is people from all over the globe, all over the United States with a variety of backgrounds that we're bringing in because we know them to be very academically rigorous. We know that they're very curious and we know that they are going to be great community members. We have over 120 student organizations. Um, this is something that you're gonna see a lot of colleges talk about, but what I love about this in particular is that about a third of our students perform in musical ensembles. I studied music in my undergrad and I, I loved having classmates who were studying chemistry and business and pre-med who were actually in uh, the choirs and orchestras with me. So a third of our students are in a musical ensemble, but they're not necessarily music majors. A third of our students are varsity athletes, so we are Division Three athletics, um, and then about a quarter of our students participate in uh, theater and dance on our campus. Uh, one of my favorite fun factoids is that even though we have such a small campus and we're in um, this beautiful community of Worcester, Ohio, with all of our um, different performance venues on campus, we have over a hundred different performances of any type every single year um, on our campus. Then the culture itself, I mentioned that we're globally focused. I absolutely adore the fact that we have international students who are always doing different showcases. We have fashion shows, we have events in the fall and in the spring. Um, and then we also have uh, our trek programs where students who don't necessarily want to do a semester or a year abroad can do a trek where it is a anywhere from a three to six week program that is designed by a professor that can either be a standalone program or can even be attached to a specific class. So one of my favorite examples, we actually had a class a couple years ago that was for, it was crops posted for history and pre-med. And so it was all about the medicines in Greece. So in ancient Greece, all of the different things that they used for medicine. And then after the semester ended, students went for four weeks to Greece to see all of the different locations that they had talked about during their studies that semester. So that was a really great way for them to inject that global perspective within this study of both history and medicine. I mentioned that we're academically rigorous, but I also mentioned that we try to get students who are uh, good citizens in general. And one of the things that has impressed me the most about Worcester is just how supportive students tend to be of each other. So yes, they're very competitive, but when I ask them the kinds of projects that they're working on, they are just as likely to brag about themselves as they are to brag about the different really cool projects that their roommate is working on or their classmate or uh, just somebody else that happens to be in their sphere, they're willing to brag about them. And I, I love that that is such a, an ingrained part of our culture. And then finally, our traditions. So you see uh, the Scottish bagpipers here. Um, this is actually a celebration of students uh, during their first day of classes, um, or the, the day before their first day of classes. We have this convocation where students um, are walked through the arch. When they complete their studies, they actually go the opposite direction to represent that they have completed their journey always led by bagpipers. So we have a strong Scottish tradition. You'll see that tartan that you, this, you'll see the kilts right there. So um, that sc Scottish tradition in the kilts, you see on the, the side of the display that deconstructed tartan as well. Um, we have a lot of Scottish tradition uh, that is very, very ingrained as part of that Worcester culture. So looks like some of my photos are not coming up on this presentation. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about in and out of the classroom. So we are as focused on having excellence inside the classroom as we are outside of the classroom. So one third, actually closer to, I think it's just under two thirds of our classes have some kind of outside the classroom or experiential learning opportunity that's attached to the class. Um, we, I mentioned that we have smaller class sizes in liberal arts colleges. That you'll see that just in our representation, a 10 to 1 student to teacher ratio. Um, it's rare that you see a class that's over 20 students. We um, also have a huge focus on that, that learning experience inside the class. So we are in the top 20 best undergraduate teaching, top 30 best first year experience, top 30 most innovative schools. 
We also, one that I know that I, uh, all of our professors are very, very proud of is that number two most accessible professors. Um, if you go into our um, biology building, you'll see that there are uh, these classrooms that are lined up um, in Williams. On the other side of them are all of the lab research facilities. So you literally have to go through a classroom to get to the labs. They're all attached. And then you have the hallway. And on the other side are all of the professor's offices. They're right there so that when students are in the labs or they're studying in one of the coves, the professors are just going to be around and helping them with their studying. So we really do everything to make our professors as accessible as possible. Um, and then, of course, beyond just having the professors there, we have a lot of great academic support services. So whether it's academic advising, we actually have life coaching, skill development. So um, between skill development and disability services, we have a lot of students who might have some learning issues and they need to figure out how to work through them. Or maybe a student who just was never good at taking notes and so they want somebody to help them to, to figure out how to do that better so they can excel in the classroom. And then, of course, peer tutoring through the writing center, the math center, and the STEM zone. So we really do everything we can to make sure that the student is successful because at the end of the day, that is our charge. We want our students to be successful. And then I mentioned that we have our um, senior capstone project. So this is the thing that if you only catch one thing, only remember one thing about the College of Worcester that needs to be our senior capstone. So every year um, since 2002 that the US News and World Report has uh, been ranking the best senior capstone experience, we have consistently been in those top two or three spots. And uh, this year actually uh, we were a little bummed We've been uh, number two for many, many years, and we then got bumped down to number three, but it was by Yale, so we couldn't be too mad. We think we're in pretty good company. So that capstone experience, it is the independent study, or IS. 100% of our students are going to do the IS. So any Worcester grad that you talk about, if you ask them, uh, oh, so what did you do for your IS? They're going to immediately tell you all about the cool projects that they did. Um, students are going to be working one on one with a professor in order to do that. So that mentorship is absolutely crucial. We're building that from year one with our students. So throughout their studies, they are building those crucial building blocks so that by the time they get to their senior research, they know who uh, they're going to have as they, their mentor. They know what it is that they want to focus on. They are ready for this. And then my favorite thing is that it's not always just a kid in a lab. So you see that that top left picture, that's very much what you think of when uh, somebody says a research project, right? But it can be creative, it can be analytical, it can be experimental, it can be a combination of all three of those things. One of my favorites, uh, last year, a student named Katie actually uh, did a project where she double majored in biology, biochemistry, or it was um, environmental biology, and uh, dance. And so she actually uh, did two projects because she had two majors, and she spent hours and hours just observing honeybees, looking at their body language, the way they communicated with each other. So if you think about it, honeybees, they're in these hives and they have to go out and look for pollination zones. So they'll have the scout bees that'll come back and actually communicate what direction the pollination zone is, um, how far away it is, how large it is, how many bees need to come with me so that we can take advantage of this. And so Katie actually looked through all of that, through hours and hours of observation, wrote this massive 100-page paper. It was beautifully done. Turned that in. And for any other student, that would be plenty. But for Katie, she loves dance and decided she wanted to double major in it. So for her dance project, she worked one-on-one -on -one with her dance professor to choreograph what she called the honeybee waggle. And so so she actually was able to juxtapose human body language with the honeybees body language and show how we as human beings actually communicate with each other and then gave us a glimpse into what it was that she had been seeing for those hours and hours with the honeybees. So it's a beautiful example of somebody who did something very analytical, but also very creative and very her. And of course, at the end of the day, I know that I could talk to you about these fun projects that students are doing, but the question in your mind is, okay, but is my kid going to get a job? Okay, but is, is my student actually going to be successful? And the answer is that 
Yes, we give every single option for these students, every single building block. When we say we want your student to be successful, it's in and out of the classroom that we want them to be successful. We give them every single opportunity so that they can be part of that 96% that are um, employed within six months or that 94% who apply to graduate school and get into their top choice school. So we have students who are doing these incredibly impressive things after graduation. And this is just a sampling of where our students have gone um, either for employment or for graduate or professional studies just in the last three or four years. So at the end of the day, we do want our students to be successful and we believe that we have really created a formula to um, get those students to where they want to go. All right, so there's a lot of information. I hope you found it useful. Um, I'm just going to go a little bit over the application process. You can, of course, find this on our website or email me with any of your questions, but I'm just going to do a quick overview um, so that you can get an idea for it. So if your student is applying through the common application, we do accept the common application. There's also coalition through Squire and our Worcester priority application. We accept any of those. The personal essay that your student writes for any of those is what we're going to ask for. We, of course, need official high school transcripts or secondary school transcripts. The uh, guidance counselor uh, writes a recommendation with a secondary school report, so we need that. A teacher letter of recommendation. Some kind of proof of English proficiency, which I'll, I'll cover in the next slide. The Worcester International Certification of Finances, so just a form that you fill out. If you've already completed the CSS profile or something else, we can waive the COF and then use the CSS in place of it so you don't have to fill out one more thing. And then last, the virtual interview, which is optional. Um, or if uh, I'm able to travel to Turkey, let's see if I can make it work. Then if you meet with me in person, then that'll work as well. Um, that's just one way to help to strengthen your application. I have a, a, a lot of students who worry that, you know, maybe the counselor recommendation isn't strong enough or, you know, my grades were kind of sloppy in ninth and 10th, but they really did pick up and I want to explain and I want to talk about it. So the virtual interview is a great opportunity opportunity for students who maybe Worcester is in their top three, or maybe Worcester is a top choice, but also they aren't sure that their application has enough context for them. So if for any university, Worcester or not, if that school is a top choice for you, and there is an interview that is optional offered, definitely take advantage of that. Okay, so we are test flexible for international students. That means that if you have an SAT or ACT or a TOEFL, if you have one of those scores, great, submit that and we'll use that as your proof of English proficiency. But if you don't have that, if you are attending an IB program or you have A-level predicted grades or you've taken several AP exams and have one um, in English language or literature, those are some of the many ways that we can show that you have English language fluency. I'll accept it. That's great. If I have any questions, I might call you up so we can have a 15-minute conversation. Um, they're typically painless. I, I tend to be very polite in those conversations, I promise. So... Um, really, there are a variety of ways for you to show English proficiency. So that's what we mean when we say that we're test flexible. So then scholarships, I mentioned that we have that certification of finances that we require. So um, that or CSS profile or anything. So we practice need aware admissions. So that means that I want to look at all of your academic profile, but I also want to make sure that if we offer you admission, we are able to offer you enough funding that we can make Worcester a reality. So we look at your academics, we look um, at uh, the need that you have presented, and then at the time of admission, you're going to get the letter of admission as well as your Worcester International Scholarship amount. Um, and then on top of that, if a student might need a little additional funding, we also have the work award. It's not a guaranteed award, but it shows you typically what a student who is um, working about 15 hours a week uh, throughout the year is going to earn for the year. Um, that just helps uh, families and their students to sort of plan out what they can expect for their um, academic cost of attendance. 
And then there are some additional scholarships I just want to mention to make sure you're aware. So um, we have the Model UN Leadership Award. So if you are involved in Model United Nations um, in your high school, that application deadline, they're going to have more information on September 1st. Uh, so I don't have all of the information quite yet. So hot off the presses. This is the first presentation I'm doing for the fall cohort. Um, so at that point, they will announce the deadlines. It's typically January 15th. Um, so with that, the, um, when the website is updated on September 1st, it'll have the instructions for how to actually apply to that. So be aware if you're a Model UN student, definitely apply for that. Um, and then, of course, definitely look into our Model UN team that is award winning, has hit nationals multiple times. They are absolutely impressive. So be sure to look into that. Um, we also have music scholarships. Those auditions are typically in January or February. And yes, we do accept uh, virtual auditions as well. You do not have to be a major major or minor to have a music scholarship. So you can just be a participant. I mentioned that about a third of our students are participating in some way. A third of our students are not music majors and minors. So um, you can audition for the music scholarship if you have that talent and you want to keep that up, um, but you don't necessarily have to make a, a more of a commitment than that. We also have the Scottish Art Scholarships. I always like to mention this one and uh, just on the off chance that one of the Turkish applicants happens to be a great Scottish dancer or knows how to play the bagpipes, we do have that scholarship opportunity. Um, and then finally, we have our theater and dance scholarships, which are similar to the music scholarship. You do not have to have it as a major or minor, um, but if that is a passion of yours, then I, I highly encourage you to look at um, those audition requirements when they are available in September. And then finally, just the uh, the deadlines for you to consider. So early decision, we have two early decision dates. That is binding. So if you know for a fact that Worcester, yes, that is my number one choice. If I get accepted, hurrah, I'm going next August and I am going to be a fighting Scott, then early decision is for you. If you are still looking about and have a lot of different options, but you know that Worcester is definitely like top five or top three for you, then definitely consider early action. So that is non-binding, but it's a great early application opportunity for you. You'll be notified by January 15th, so you have uh, that, that earlier opportunity. Um, you'll still have some time before the May 1 deadline to make that decision, but it lets us know that Worcester is, is that top three or top five option for you. Um, and if you're just not sure and you know you want to apply, but you don't know where Worcester is on your, le on your list, then there's regular decision, apply by February 15th. You can start the application process now. You don't have to start in the spring, um, but you don't have to, to um, declare early action or early decision. All right, and that is it for my presentation. Um, I hope that you found that useful. I saw a couple of questions popping in on there, so um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Oh, I think you're muted, yes, I'm all right, one was a comment I wrote in Turkish, so I'll say that in Turkish, in both languages, if you wish to ask your questions in Turkish, we're very happy to translate. Sorularınızı Türkçe sormak isterseniz hemen tercüme ederiz. Hiç sorun olmaz. Um, just wanted to let him know that. Um, I see a couple good questions here on, uh, oh, I knew, okay, well, a few more coming in. Um, this was going to be big issue. Yes, I'm going to ask your second question first, but more information on pre-engineering options and partners and any detail you can provide on the, the three tours similar. Thank you. Thank you that they're oh. asking about that. Yeah, we have a couple of programs. Um, so we have a partnership with Wash U as well as a partnership um, with Case Western University. Um, I know that the partnership with Wash U, so they're both three plus two programs. Um, what I love about the Wash U program is they actually have the option to then extend um, for two additional years for a master's program. So um, that one is particularly exciting. We just had the rep visit, so it was uh, great to learn about that. But with um, our um, options for research, even though you won't be with us for our fourth year, you will have plenty of opportunity in those first three years to uh, get your hands dirty, as we say in the U.S. How difficult do you think is the criteria to actually get into the last two um, and make that make that um, bridge that, you know, transfer? Yeah. Um, so they actually have very clear guidelines. I believe it's a 3.2 GPA, um, a, a, uh, no more than I think one 
see in specific science courses. So um, if that is something that a student is interested in, then the academic advisor will work with the student to make sure that they meet all of that criteria. But it, it's fairly straightforward, actually. Thank you. Um, and she also asked, is the psychology department degree, is, is it a BA or BSc, she's asking? They're both options. Perfect. Yeah. Rima, do you want to ask your question? Let's talk to some students. Come in here. Take yourself off mute. Come on, let's be college ready, guys. Come on. I let's promise I'm nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, I'm Rima. And Yay. I was just going to ask, uh, what is the best feature of College of Worcester? I mean, for you, of course. And like, what should come up to our mind when we hear the name College of Worcester? Yeah, um, for me, it's honestly just how academically curious students are. Um, so it, it really is that curiosity is such an ingrained part of it. Um, so I went to a, a private school as well. Um, and I remember coming out of high school and, you know, when, when I was in high school, I was, I was the nerdy one and I was always very curious. And then I entered into school and I realized, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. Um, and so Worcester is very much that place where kids realize, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. So uh, a lot of very curious students who uh, come together and love to be curious together, which I honestly just, I, I love hearing about all of the fun projects that our students are working on. Um, so when you think of Worcester, I, I hope that what you think of is that senior capstone project, the, the IS or independent study. Um, the thing I, I love about the IS is that it really is driven by the students. The, the student is designing it, they're executing it, they meet every week with their, their professor, that one-on-one -on -one mentorship, but that's just the professor is just their guidepost to make sure that they're getting everything done on time to bounce ideas off of, but it really is driven by the students. So I hope that with Worcester, you, you, you think of the fact that students in their four years feel so ready by their senior year that they can do something like that, which I personally think is incredible. Can I ask Thank a question? Thank you. Yeah, you can just jump You're in. You're welcome. All right. Uh, I uh, I don't think uh, that like flexible programs and schedules are really important in colleges and universities. So as you mentioned, there are flexible programs, uh, and like I can create my own, uh, like schedules. So what can I do uh, that is supported by the university? Uh, like um, I am this uh, I want either business or economics major. I'm like interested in those areas. So like, what can I do? Uh, that is supported by the university uh, in my flexible programs, flexible so times. Yeah, we have a STEM designated business economics program. Um, it actually is really focused on econometrics. And because of that, it's actually STEM designated. Um, mm -hmm. We have an award winning uh, Yeni investments program that has quite an impressive portfolio as well. Um, one of my students, um, Hayan, is um, actually part of the uh, investments club. They recently, I think, just hit 12.8 million in their portfolio. They're doing quite well. Um, so if you're interested in business economics, um, that's actually one of the areas that um, a lot of our international students are very interested in and tend to thrive. Uh, to expand on it a little bit, uh, uh, does your university like uh, support uh, some kind of like co-ops or interns that I can like do something uh, uh, which is like probably like university uh, supported outside of the university? Yes, absolutely. Um, so a big focus uh, in getting students to where they need to go is making sure they have that experiential component. Um, mm -hmm. So one of my favorite examples is our AMRI. Um, it's an applied method, methods and uh, research experience. So um, every summer we have students who are, uh, well, there are only a, about, I think, 18 spots. So it's very, very competitive. Um, but they have maybe three times that actually apply to enter this 
this program. Um, and we'll have companies like Goodyear Tire or Progressive Insurance who actually hire groups of our students led by one professor to work on a real world project for them. Um, so I know that we have, we just finished our third year in a row with Goodyear Tire working on a specific project that was uh, 3D modeling of different out, uh, outdoor tires that's uh, very, very complex that I do not understand. I was not a physics or engineering major, um, but it was really fun to talk to the students about that project. Uh, beyond that, um, we also have um, the Apex uh, Apex internship programs where um, students can not just get assistance in applying to internships and doing that, but um, through the um, Apex program, students can actually gain some financial assistance. Um, one of the reasons they started it actually was because of international students. So if you you are doing um, CPT or curricular practical training. Um, that is what allows you as an F1 international student in the US to actually do a, a job outside of the school that has to be related to your field. In order to do that, you actually have to register for a class. And so this um, Apex Assistantship Program actually helps you to be able to cover that fee so that you can actually go out and do that internship and gain the money from the experience. Um, so it was born out of that, but then has benefited both international and domestic students. Um, one of my favorite examples actually is a couple years ago, we had a student who was studying um, biology, specifically uh, different uh, water systems and environmental biology. And he he got an assistantship to go to the Amazon rainforest and through the um, Apex assistantship program, he was able to um, help to fund his tickets to go there as well as um, fund part of his housing because they weren't going to pay him very much um, because it was, you know, more of an environmental program working for an NGO, but it was such a life changing experience that he wanted to do that. Yeah, can I ask a question? Yes, I'm sorry. You can, I, oh, guys, yeah. you, you don't have uh, to say, can I ask a question? Just jump in. Yeah, habits. Oh, uh, adult. I, do, do IB credits or IB uh, exams uh, amount to credits like in other, other schools? So if I say, if I have a six or seven from math uh, uh, and else and approaches a high level, does it count any classes in, in Worcester? Yes, um, so we have um, information about the different IB credits, AP credits, and uh, um, and similar um, A levels, for example, that that will transfer into Worcester and what you'll get depending on which score. So we do offer that for IB. And uh, is there any restrictions? So, so I, I haven't checked the classes, but for example, if what uh, if one of those classes is on the requirements, for example, for the pre-engineering program, does it like stop it from uh, transferring or can I use those credits for those lessons uh, so for I, the pre-engineering program? I don't know specifically about the the course, the individual courses required for pre-engineering, but um, that is a conversation that you can have with your academic advisor. Um, we actually require all of our students to meet with an academic advisor a couple of months before they even step foot on campus. So you'll already um, start that advising process in, in the summer, probably in June or July before you even come to Worcester. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Can I jump in really quick? Uh, from my twin. Uh, I wanted to know that you mentioned internships and how you help students find that. I'm particularly interested in psychology very much. And I want to know, um, like, do you guys help find internships like that? Like, how can I take what I learned in psychology as in theory and apply them into real life? Maybe with local like, organizations, maybe in a psychiatric clinic, something like that. Do you guys help connect us to those places? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, our... Uh our uh, employment services, I forgot the word employment, our employment services um, have uh, different events where we bring employers on campus so that uh, they can talk about their internships with students. Typically, students will, will go with their resume and, and chat with them. Uh, we also, in our employment services, have uh, different people who are, are, are constantly uh, being made aware of different opportunities. So um, one of the reasons that relationship with your professor is so important is if there are psychology-specific um, internships available, professors will get to, uh, will be told about them and they'll help the, the 
students to be made aware. So those connections, that that mentorship is really important. Um, as far as, um, as other ways to get involved as well, if you're interested more in psychiatric medicine, we actually have great partnerships with a lot of local hospitals. Um, I know that students take advantage for that uh, for our pre-health, our psychology programs. Um, a lot of students are actually focused more on uh, elder care that's becoming a big uh, topic of discussion in the United States. And so we actually have um, connections to local hospice as well. So lots of opportunities either through direct partnerships um, or through the employers that come to our campus. Thank you so much. To jump in, but I'm going to just say something. And if you agree, I'm going to say it in Turkish too, because I think it's really important to emphasize. So if you listen to Rebecca, like well, the picture you should be getting is an institution whose focus is extremely, you know, you know, it's, it's, they're really focused on the student in all ways possible. And it's size, it's not huge. You're working directly with professors. They're paying you all of their attention. Like you're probably having lunch and coffee with them. You're probably going to their houses and stuff like that. And they're using their personal networks. The school is going out of its way to work only for the student who goes there. And there's a lot of focus on the international students. It's a really great environment. And it's not a surprise that when you graduate, you know, employers or, you know, graduate school opportunities will look very favorably upon that because you're more ready because you've you've gotten that way in the four years. Do you agree? Absolutely. Can I yeah. just say that in Turkish quick too? Please do, yeah. Yani tam yüzde yüz anlamını anlamayan olursa diye Türkçe söyleyeceğim çok önemli. Yani karşınızda böyle gördüğünüz, tasavvur ettiğiniz resim şu olması gerekiyor. Okulun size. Profesörlerle direkt çalışmak, böyle teachers, assistantlarla değil, profesörlerle ve aranızdaki ilişkiler, onların kendi networklerini sizin için müdahale geçip işte yardımcı olmaları, iş bulmakta, staj bulmakta. Yani büyük okuldan farkını anlıyorsunuz değil mi bu okulun? Liberal Arts'ın yani tam anlamı esasında bu. Gerçekten öğrencilere fokuslu bir sistem. So sorry, thank you. Uh, I want to ask another question. Uh, considering the location and the size of your university uh, and as like an international student, uh, I want to like ask about the residential options and like what can I like do in my free time? Because like not actually free time, but like it's kind of far from the city and like there are not enough like people in the campus, I believe, uh, to like create a city so like uh what are the people are doing and like there are enough residential places that we can stay or, like yeah. can we stay on the neighborhood are there like rental places so you actually live on campus all four years you you never have to worry about am i going to have a place to live it it is all four years that you live on campus 97 of our students live on campus and that three mm percent -hmm. is very very specific yeah. situations. Um, so we are in the heart of the city of Worcester, the town of Worcester. I don't know if it's a town or a city, I can't recall. Um, so there is a lot to do in that downtown area that is just right next to campus. Um, there are also, I mentioned a lot of clubs and organizations, they have mm -hmm. a lot of outings. So um, for example, our um, international student club actually had um, an opportunity to go to Chicago for the weekend. And so they arranged the bus, they arranged all of those things. You just had to sign up and I think put down like $50 just to help to pay for the gas. Um, and then everyone went to Chicago for the weekend. So there are always different opportunities that are available um, for you to to go out and about. But then I also mentioned there are over a hundred different performances just on campus. So um, it's, it is such a big deal to support each other in what you're doing. So it's incredibly common for me to be on campus and hear a student say, oh, okay, Patty is going to be performing this weekend. We have to go either Friday or Saturday, which one works best for you? Not are we going, but which one are we going to? So supporting your students in those kinds of things, big, big deal, um, as well as the different sporting events. Um, so they, it really does, in, in your mind, it sounds like, okay, so it's this tiny campus, there are not very many people. It's by design. We want students to be in that environment that really supports that, that uh 
that holistic growth. You are growing because you're surrounded by these amazingly supportive uh, students. You are surrounded by professors. You are part of this community that is all about your growth as an individual and as a scholar. So there is definitely more to do than I think meets the eye. Thank you. Of course. Uh, Rebecca, just a quick two-part question actually. And okay. uh, and thank you so much for presenting the information and uh, and also just for highlighting the awesome school of uh, the College of Worcester. So thank you. Uh, thank I'm you. one of the I'm one of the counselors for Littons. And uh, a question I have, well, I guess first off, just kind of a, a statement, but coming to the US for higher education is an expensive proposition. And uh, uh, my two-part question is this. One, for pre-engineering, what's the cost transparency like for that program? Usually I get nervous whenever I hear two bachelor's degrees, just from, especially for domestic students, considering financial aid. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's the first part. Uh, second part, uh, it sounds like what I, what I thought, which is for Worcester is a very welcoming place for international students. But in general, what is uh, the support like from a financial side from the College of Worcester for international students? Does this include any particular scholarships as an example? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Okay, so um, breaking down finances. Um, I cannot speak specifically to uh, the part that um, the other universities, either Wash U or Case Western do for their part, but with the three plus two, the three years that students are studying at Worcester, um, we have a, a couple of options. So um, first I mentioned that we are need aware in our applications. So we will only make an offer if we believe that it is going to sufficiently uh, cover the student's expenses. Um, so we don't offer any absolutely fully funded uh, scholarships, except in very very rare occasions. Um, we do offer a maybe two or three per year full tuition scholarships, but also just very, very rare occasions. So typically the students are going to be paying at least some tuition and covering their room and board. Um, I forgot to include the slide that actually broke down all of that. So as soon as you asked that, I realized, oh, shoot, I forgot that slide. Um, so our full cost of attendance, um, if you have no scholarships, which all of my students have scholarships. Um, full cost of attendance is going to be about 80,000 a year, which is terrifying. That's a big number. Nobody pays that. <laughs> So um, the tuition itself is about 61000 So then um, the housing room, um, the uh, health insurance, all of that is going to be about twenty k. Um, so typically, um, an international student and their family is going to be paying anywhere from about twenty five, twenty six, up to maybe forty. So that's that's typically the range that I'm seeing. Um, but again, it, it's also a conversation. So sometimes I'll have students that before they fill out their um, certification of finances, they're not quite sure what to put down. I am always happy to sit down with the family, look through things, have that conversation with them. Um, I came from a situation where the only reason I was able to even go to a private school was a combination of my merit scholarships, my need awards from the government, and my uh, music scholarships. It's the only way that I was able to do it. So um, uh, Worcester in general tends to be very transparent. We want to make sure that we are helping the student and their families to make the right decision. And that includes not coming to Worcester. If that's the right decision for you, we don't want we, we don't want unhappy students. We don't want families to be put out. Um, and then you asked about financial assistance. So um, we offer a couple of different things for students. So I mentioned the um, the Apex assistantship. So helping students to to afford different internship opportunities, which is probably one of my favorite things that they do. Um, we also have um, a a small increase in the scholarship to kind of help defray the 
see the um, increase in um, the tuition that's going to happen every year. Part of that price transparency, actually, when I sit down with a family, once the um, student has been admitted, I have a whole worksheet that that shows that, uh, you know, roughly a 3% increase. This is what you're looking at for four years. Plan accordingly. Make sure that you have the whole picture. Just because I've worked with so many families over the years that that when they see that 3% increase, they're completely shocked. So I, I never want a family to be shocked by that. Um, and then um, on top of that, we understand that economic situations happen. So one of our, I think it's our sixth most represented population is Ethiopian students. And so they've been hit pretty hard economically. Um, even just recently, I had an Ethiopian student who was supposed to come in the fall who had to defer to January just because of a recent dip in the value of um, the Ethiopian burn. So he he had to do that deferral in hopes that it's going to uh, to stabilize a little bit soon, uh, sooner. So because of that population, as soon as we started to see that, our international student office actually reached out to the um, financial services office and worked with our Ethiopian students to find additional grants to, to help them to make it more of a reality because they're great kids. We don't want them to, to lose out on this experience. And so um, I, we were very fortunate that we had a couple of um, of donors and alumni who were willing to to help them to sort of cushion that so that they could complete their studies. So it's, it's not necessarily one thing. It's a, a combination of sort of that community coming together to make sure that we can support students. Thank you. There's a question um, on whether the um, dorms are open during breaks, Christmas, summer type yeah, so they are open during Christmas break. Um, pretty common for international students to be on campus. I know they have different uh, celebrations as well, although it's also really common for um, international students or out-of-state students to go home with their roommates or one of their friends to um, to experience a Christmas. Um, I had an international student who uh, had, she was from Nepal, who uh, I, I was asking her what she was doing for Christmas, and she said, oh, I've watched every Christmas movie growing up. I am so excited. I'm going with my roommate's family, and I'm going to experience it. And then in January, when she came back, she's like, it was everything I dreamed of. She was so excited. Um, so sorry, aside. Um, for summer, if a student is participating in um, a, a pro program specific to the school, so um, they're taking classes or they're a part of um, like our, our Amory program or they are a counselor for one of the high school or junior high camps, then they have the option to stay on campus as well. So it's, it's pretty common for international students to take at least one class in the summer or to participate one of those programs. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Uh, this is Yeshim again. Uh, I would like to ask a question that I realized that uh, it's a pretty conservative state, uh, Ohio. So how is the attitude for internationals, let me say? Yeah, no, that's that's a great question. Um, so I've lived in Ohio for eight years now. I'm not originally from Ohio. Um, I'm Brazilian American. I grew up hopping between Wyoming and uh, the northeast of Brazil. So um, Ohio is sort of my adopted home at this point. Um, so it, it really does depend on where you are in Ohio. Um, Worcester the town itself and the school itself tends to be incredibly accepting. Um, uh, one of the things that really, really attracted me to it actually was just because of the that that um, fostering of acceptance, that fostering of building each other up, that, that's really baked into Worcester's identity. Um, but I, at the same time, I do understand that there are fears that I, as a white presenting Latina, am, am not really privy to. So um, I, I always encourage in those situations that if you want to speak to one of my current students, uh, they, I have four um, interns who are from different parts of the world who are always happy to chat with you. And I tell them to be honest. I, I don't want to hide anything from you. I never want a student to come on campus and be completely shocked by, by what's going to happen. So um, if you want to speak to them about their experience, I'm more than happy to connect you. Is it safe, uh, what you can say in general, is it a safe state or safe city? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ohio is, uh, it's part of Midwest. There, there is a, <laughs> there's a term called Midwest nice, um, that I, I have experienced firsthand. It is very, very real. Yes. Yeah, someone was, was just there. You spent a week with me on a bus. 
<laughs> but if, if you go from Ohio to New York City, you'll be shocked. <laughs> So yes, uh, very welcoming. Uh, I I have had times where I just I have like a a little bit of a cold, and all of a sudden there's a casserole on on my front porch. So yeah, everything is it's a very safe, very nice environment. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the the Amish community. They they are uh, uh, so one of the largest populations of Amish actually uh, are right next door to Worcester. Um, Two fun facts. One of them uh, is that our Walmart has horse and buggy parking because of that. <laughs> um, and our other fun fact is that one of the nation's foremost experts on that community actually works for Worcester. Um, and every spring actually has a class with a very long waiting list um, to actually get to step into that community. He's one of the few people that they trust to enter their community and actually uh, work with them. So uh, if that gives you an idea of the safety standards, you can ride around in a horse and buggy. It's it's a, a very nice community. <laughs> I this is this is maybe a personal opinion, but anyone who looks into and um, chooses liberal art and liberal arts education is going to be very sophisticated. So your community is going to be very open minded. Very, um, they're going to be critical thinkers because if you're not, you'll you're, you're not going to survive. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there, it's a it's it's a very comfortable. Community. I was just going to. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so I just looked at your majors and I personally would be most interested in majoring in uh, biochemistry. So I wanted to ask a question about the research like projects that students do in that major. Like are they collaborative? So do students collaborate with other students or are they more like one-on-one -on -one with faculty members? And also I was wondering if there was like a course about training students uh, about like laboratory techniques and you know, uh, other like technical knowledge like that because um, I personally would like to like you know intern at uh, like someplace like a biotechnology lab so I'm assuming that I would need like a lot of uh, knowledge about like you know lab techniques so am I going to be educated on that? Absolutely. Yes. Um, so first part of your question, um, is it collaborative or is it individual? Yes. There are all kinds of different projects. Um, so you're going to start off, um, I, I mentioned that we have those building blocks that that four-year curriculum is designed to, to get you up to speed so you can design your own research project. So that first year um, of classes, your classrooms are literally attached to the labs. And so you're going to be learning the theory and then the practice. And a big part of that is just lab safety, research techniques, um, how to, to go about a number of really, really crucial basic steps, because we believe you, you have to walk before you can run. You have to learn those basic steps before you can then go in and actually conduct research. Um, and then those early stages, once you have gotten that, that technique, then you're going to start on those group projects, get to work with other students, work with other professors, work with some of the senior students who are working on their projects so you can see how they're doing things. And then, of course, that experiential component is one of the most important building blocks is going out there and actually doing that research, going into the labs, going and having that experience. Uh, we we want you to do research and have that, that R&D experience. So um, that is actually the second year um, I have this whole chart that I didn't have time to show you. Uh, that second year is focused on that experiential learning so that you you can have that experience, get that internship, and then eventually get that job after graduation. So great question. Also, really excited you want to do biochem. A lot of my students are in that program. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Well, so Dan's already got some research underway. She's she's a veteran of STEM research. All right. <laughs> so I love it. This is great. I, I see a ton of engagement, which tells me people understand the value of, you know, the school and the system. So oh, this I'm has been really nice. Thank really you for happy. all of your questions. Yeah. You're asking amazing questions. Good job speaking up. Very college ready people here in Turkey. I know. I'm really well, you the one Usually okay. everyone's very quiet and they're not saying anything and it's just oh. me doing my song and dance. This is great. Yeah. It will will you be the one looking at their applications? Yes, yes. Um, I am always the second reader for international students. And so I have my primary reader that just goes through, make sure everything is in order, make sure that they, they don't catch any uh, red flags. And then I do that final read and recommendation. Yep, every one of you. 
Thank you. Perhaps we can conclude with that at the top of the hour. We thought it was going to be a short presentation and some Q&A, but boy, we there's a lot of interest. So we, we took the whole hour and thank you for that. Thank you, Rebecca. This is amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Well, thank this you so much for having fun. me. This has been a lot of fun. I appreciate it. Well, I hope everybody loved it as much as I personally did too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.